Hello and welcome to our first lesson in our course on performance indices. Today we'll be deriving what a performance index is and showing how it connects to material performance and our material selection methodology. But before I get into the definition, we need to think about what we mean by performance. When building something physical, materials come into play. But what exactly do we mean by material performance? Well, those of you who have taken our Intro to Material Performance course will already be familiar with this definition. But a material's performance is how a material behaves with a specific objective in mind once in service in a product. A material's properties, which are related to its atomic structure and its processing conditions, affect how the material performs in a given product, depending on our design requirements. In our basic systematic material selection course, we introduced the Ashby selection methodology as a way to logically go through and translate our design requirements into a material's functions, constraints, objectives, and free design parameters that we can use to identify the top material candidates for a given design. Specifically, when we talked about the objectives, we're talking about what we're trying to optimize in our design. And we mentioned how this is related to the function of the design especially in the case for load-bearing components. But all the examples we showed only had one objective. So let's look at another example. Say that I'm trying to design some rope that I'm gonna use for rock climbing. Well, we're gonna have some minimum safety criteria for this rope, as it's holding the weight of a human being in the air while they're scaling a mountain. We can do this with our Ashby charts. Simply create a bar chart with yield strength on the y-axis. If strength is the property that we're trying to optimize, well, I'm going to be considering materials up here, like steels, titanium, even carbon fiber. But if I have to hike to where I'm going to be rock climbing, I also need this rope to be lightweight, I'm not interested in carrying 30 kilograms of rope on my backpacking trip. So we simply add density to the x-axis of our chart. But now the materials that optimized our first criteria strength are some of the heaviest. And the lightest materials are foams, which aren't very strong and they're not gonna meet our minimum criteria for safety. I just mentioned that this objective relates to the function, but I have yet to include the fact that this rope will be acting as a tie in tension while I'm rock climbing. How does this come into play in my chart? Well, this is where performance indices come in. A performance index is a single material property or a group of material properties that represent the performance of our design. Now, this flow chart that I'm showing on the screen right here is what we'll walk through in order to derive our performance indices in future lessons. But let's take a moment to step through it now and see how the elements that we identify during the translation step of our methodology influence our performance index. We start with the function. For our case example of the rope, this is a tie in tension. Next, we move on to our objectives. Now, while strength is important for our rope for rock climbing, we don't need ultimate strength. We can set some minimum safe value. Therefore, the property we're trying to optimize is weight. Specifically, we're trying to minimize the mass. Then we consider our constraints. We are setting some minimum acceptable strength as a limit within our design. Therefore, this is a strength limited design and when coupled with the objective will ultimately influence the performance index we get at the end. But how do we get this combination of properties? We'll tune into our next lesson. Where we'll go through the derivation in detail and give you some additional resources about the theory behind them. My name is Dr. Caitlin Tyler. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.